So the last video left off with us um, looking at this data, this Australian tourist data, quarterly data for 1999 through 2010, and we said we needed to rearrange the data um, to put each observation into a single row, giving us 48 rows. That sort of stuff. So then after we did that, uh, what we needed to do was to plot the data and determine whether or not there would be any kind of patterns that we could come up with. So we saw this before. Here's the plot. All right, this is what we did in the last video. We plotted the x-axis as a time period, uh, and then it does appear that there's some kind of upward linear trend going on, and also looks like each quarter kind of has its own season. Um, kind of difficult to tell right now if this is additive or multiplicative seasonality, but uh, we're going to uh, try a couple things out. So let's go ahead and fit a multiple regression line, multiple regression model using both trend and quarterly seasons. So that means that we're assuming it's additive seasonality. That's fine. We'll just we'll just assume that for now. So in order to do the seasonality, we need to create s minus one dummy variables because we have quarterly data. We probably think that the each quarter is its own season, so we'll need three dummy variables. For this, I'm going to pick fourth quarter as the base. In other words, there's no explicit dummy variable for it, primarily because it's the last season for each uh, each year, and it's, it's a little bit easier to code the data. But you know, you can as long as you know which one is your base and keep with it you can still make get, come to the same conclusions right? so here's what we want the data set to eventually look like uh, we have the year the quarter the international tourist visitor nights in Australia and millions so we already have those three columns in the proper format uh, then we need to add a time period index which again is just a, a counter from one up through in our case 48 and then we'll have dummy variables like we covered in unit three a one indicating if this particular row of data is in the first quarter zero otherwise same thing for quarter two quarter three and then notice that for the fourth quarter because it's our base there will be all zeros in that row right here and what that means is if it's it's not in the first quarter it's not in the second quarter it's not in the third quarter so it has to be in the fourth quarter which is our base so let's go back to the data set. Uh, I went ahead and copied this over for us and changed the, the, the title here for the first one for uh, column C. And then to make it consistent with what's on the slides, let's do time period index and then quarter one, quarter two, quarter three. And those will be dummy variables. Right? And then make everything pretty. Time period index, we just do one, two, and then count. We ought to be able to autofill that down all the way down to 48. Right. Then for quarter one, we can either hard code it or use an if statement. I'm going to use an if statement. If B2 equals in double quotes quarter one, return a one, otherwise zero. All right. So in that case, I get a one. If, uh, let me scroll over so you can see a little better. If B2 equals quarter two, return a one, otherwise return a zero. And if B2 equals, double quote, quarter three, return a one, otherwise a zero. And now, because I did relative reference, I ought to be able to auto-fill that all the way down. So let's check. This is in quarter one, so there's a one showing up. The second one is in quarter two, quarter three, and then all zeros. So we get this nice diagonal one pattern and then a row of zeros. That's one of the reasons I, I picked the last one, so I could look at this quickly and determine if there's anything out of whack, which it does not appear that there is. Um, and it looks like it is okay for everything. So once we have the dummy variables and the time period index, we want to create an estimated regression equation, multiple regression, 
uh, where our dependent variable, our Y, our outcome variable, the thing we're trying to forecast, is the international visitor nights in Australia in millions. And we're going to use four different X variables, the time period index, and then the three dummy variables for quarter one, quarter two, and quarter three. Remember for Excel, all of the X variables, all the independent variables, need to be in columns next to each other. They have to be contiguous columns, otherwise it won't work. So if I go up to data, data analysis, and pick regression, again we're letting Excel do all the heavy lifting for us. We're not doing anything crazy here. Uh, so C1 through C49 for the Y variable, the X range. is uh, D1 through D49 and I picked row 1 so I have labels All right. and let's go ahead and stick them in a new worksheet ply and see what we get alright so when we do this uh, overall the model is statistically significant that's a really small number and then we want to look at the p-values on the independent variables the X's Time period index has a very, very small p-value, meaning that that does look like there's a linear trend. In this case, it looks like it's upward based off of the, the coefficient, which is positive. And then the p-value for quarter one is very, very small, as is quarter two. It's even smaller. And then quarter three is small also. So even at the 1% significance level, all of my independent variables are statistically significant. So that is telling me that yes, there probably is a linear trend that we should capture in our forecasting method as well as each quarter is its own season and we want to capture that separately as well. So we can say uh, that there, that both of the, all those things exist. The linear trend which is positive and uh, which means upward is there um, and then what can we say about the seasonality? Which season is the one that contain, has the most tourists coming into Australia? Well, remember our base was quarter four. So all of the coefficients on the dummy variables, quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, are in relation to quarter four. So if we look at the coefficient on quarter one, it's positive. Quarter two is a negative, and quarter three is a negative. So that means in relation to the fourth quarter of the year, quarter one brings in 6.7 million more visitors to Australia than quarter four does. Quarter two brings in 9.7 million visitors less than quarter four, because it's a negative, and quarter three brings in 3.3 million visitors less than quarter four. So our highest volume quarter for tourist is quarter one. Our second highest is quarter four, third highest quarter three, smallest quarter two. So we can tell that by looking at the coefficients. All right. So if we go back to here, what can we say? Yes, there is a trend. Yes, seasonality is there. And which quarter is the highest? That was easy. It was quarter one. The lowest was quarter two. Right. So now we're going to take this estimated regression equation and use it to forecast into the future. So how do we do that? Well, we use the coefficients that came out of the estimated regression equation. So our, our predicted value at time period t is approximately, so I could all fit it all on the slide, 25.77 plus 0.4. 454 times T, that captures the linear trend, plus the seasonality, 6.74 times quarter one, minus 9.72 times quarter two, minus 3.33 times quarter three. Now, once we have that, we can calculate our metrics on all of the historical data, right? And then also, how far into the future can I forecast using this model? So I'm going to pause there, and then we'll come back and we'll try to actually use this method to forecast into the future.